Hey folks, uh, welcome in here. News 12 now, Dash. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, just after 11 o'clock here on our Wednesday, June 28th, uh, we've got a very special guest here with us this morning. We have got former Josie Eagle, Dion Grant, uh, joining us. Dan as well is also here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we've got a, a little bit of a, a background on Dion. Dion, if you uh, excuse me for a second, I got quite a few notes here to take. Uh, 1995 state champion, 1998 national champion with the University of Tennessee, Super Bowl champion with the New York Giants back in 2011-2012, Super Bowl 46, uh, led the SEC in interceptions twice, led the country in interceptions once, and All-American in 1998. Uh, the list goes on. And most recently, the number, uh, the new thing added to that list is Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame inductee. So, Dion, uh, first of all, thank you so much for joining us, and congratulations Congratulations on your induction into the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So let's uh, let's start there with your uh, your Hall of Fame induction. When did you find out uh, that you were getting inducted, and what were those first moments like when you first got that news? I'm trying to think. Um, I think Marcus Stroud woke me up early one morning. Um, I think when they first announced it or uh, some kind of way he got, he saw it on the news or somebody called him before they put it out. Um, he called me and I didn't know what he was talking about. And then I got another text from Terrence Edwards. Um, that's how I found out before, you know, um, the committee was able to reach out to me and let me know. Marcus Stroud called me and then Terrence Edwards sent me a text. And what was it like knowing that um, you were going to be inducted along with uh, 39 other high school football legends here in Georgia? Um, I was excited. I was excited for, you know, I think the main reason is, you know, the more accolades I get, the more recognition um, comes back to my community. You know, my high school, my, my ex-teammates that I played with in high school, my coaches that, I, that coached me during high school. So, Every time I get an accolade, you know, it is definitely exciting because, um, you know, it just showed the kids from our community that, you know, it's, a pos it, it, it's possible that they can make it out of their situation. Yeah, and, and that's one thing I wanted to hit on, too. Um, you know, going to Josie, we don't get a lot of people from our area that go to major college programs like you did at Tennessee and then on to the NFL and then have the long career that you had. Um, what was your motivation and coming up through high school, the high school ranks, uh, you know, did you look up to certain people that had been there before or who were some mentors you had? Um, what kind of got you through high school into the next level? Yes, I have to say, um, you know, we, I definitely had mentors in the community like um, Willie Talbert, we call him Tebow. Um, he took, he took after a lot of us, you know, had us over at his house. He was a father, a second father to some of us that, um, fathers wasn't in our lives. Even the fathers that was in our lives, he still played a, a huge father role, him and his wife. Um, I have to say him for one, but uh, somebody that actually played and made it, I have to say Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson, he went to Josie also, played years in the league, also won the Super Bowl. And he came back and just showed us, you know, how to carry ourselves to on the next level as far as college and if we have an opportunity to make it to the pros. So I have to say them two guys. Yeah, you had uh, a lot of success at all levels um, of your, your football career. I know it's it's hard to beat a Super Bowl. Was that the, the best moment of your career or was it win the national championship in college? Was it winning it in your high school uh, on the state level? I mean, what what is if you had to define your career in one highlight, uh, what would it be? In the NFL? Really throughout your whole football career. High school, college, pro. Hmm. I have to say in high school, us having the opportunity to go back down to Colquitt County and um and beat Colquitt because they embarrassed us the year before. So um as soon as they beat us, that was our motivation. You know, we didn't care about anybody else on that schedule the next year. Um we were just focused to make sure that we went back down there and beat them. In college, I would have to say, um, I have to say the Florida game, um, the one hand interception. I want to say Arkansas because um, Arkansas had us beat in. 
it was just a moment in the Arkansas game when I blocked the field goal um, that changed, you know, changed the game. But I think the one that stands out more than anything would have to be um, the Florida game when we, you know, upset Florida that year and went and went to win the national. And in the NFL, um, I have to say my first game. You know, it, it should be the Super Bowl, but being that um, that was my second. That was my second go around with the Super Bowl, even though I lost the first one um, by a field goal. But um, I have to say the first game because of who we played. It was my first NFL game, and I was actually, I was, you know, I actually set the Carolina Panthers single game um, record by three interceptions, and it was against high power offense as far as Randy Moss, Cole Pepper, Chris Carter, and all them guys, and I was able to have three interceptions in my first NFL game. So I have to say that one stands out more than anything. Yeah, and I know we've got uh, a bunch of NFL questions for you. I know Dan is chomping at the bit. You're talking to a couple Giants fans here. So, uh, of course, we want to know all about, you know, the Super Bowl run and whatnot. But before we get into that, uh, I wanted to talk about staying a little bit localized here in Augusta because uh, you had mentioned earlier um, when you get these accolades, it reflects on where you came from and Josie and Augusta. And you're a community guy. We've seen you around here a few times. Uh, I remember we, we ran into each other at a Josie basketball game uh, a couple years ago. And, and the first time we met was at that uh, Give Kids a Smile event over at AU through your foundation. What does this community mean to you? And why is it so important for you to come and, and give back and still uh, represent here? Oh, it, means, it means everything. Um, that community raised me made me the man I am today, um, you know, gave me a lot of support, a lot of positive energy. I can honestly say with all the bad things that was going on um, in the 80s and the 90s that, it, you know, they never put, put that burden on me. Um, I never had to worry about looking over my shoulders. They made sure they protected me. And Every level I done played on, I had a lot of support from my community. Um, I can't speak of others, but from my community to the news, to the radio stations, I always had a lot of support. So I make sure that whenever I'm out, I don't care what state I'm in, what country I am, that I represent the right way and um, that I, I could be a positive role model for the kids that's coming up behind me. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, like I said, we've seen you here a number of times and you've got your foundation. What is life after football looking like for Dion Grant this last decade or so? Busy, <laughs> busy. Um, between trying to come back home and support the kids in that community, um, it don't just have to be Josie, you know. I don't care if it's Glenn here. If it, you know, I know kids all over. It's Laney, Butler, with a, you know, Westside, you know, I try and get back. If not speaking, putting events together, um, you know, being a mentor, one-on-one -on -one training with them on the field and off the field, on the court, off the court. Um, and then, I, I, you know, I'm part owner and, you know, uh, and a heavy entrepreneur when it comes to investing in a lot of business out there. So I got a lot of companies that I'm part owner of. So between that and still doing stuff with the NFL, PA, um, in the NFL, you know, staying pretty busy. Yeah, that's great. That's great because uh, I know a lot of times it can feel like um, after football, it's like, okay, what do I do now? And a lot of guys may not have that sense of direction, but it's great you've been able to, to find uh, success post-NFL as well. Uh, Dan, I'll let you hop in here. I know you've got some, uh, some questions for Dion. Yeah, no doubt. And, and Dion, thank you again for taking the time, of course. And we, I was actually curious about this. When you played in high school, what would you say was your best rivalry when you went to Josie? Well, you know, I think it's going to stand out as Laney. You know, Laney was the game that everybody, you know, you wasn't going to be able to get any tickets, regardless of us in football dominating Laney. When I was in high school, um, they never beat us, but I would have to say that was because they had the talent on their team to beat us. You know, they had the Kendra Bells and all that. Um, so they had the talent to beat us, but I would have to say Lane. You know, and, and something, you know, Nick hit on this earlier about you having success on all the different levels of football and just 
If you had a message for anybody, what would you say is the most important part to being able to have success in that way? Because, you know, all athletes know that it, it takes when you finally get to the mountaintop, it is a feeling like no other because of the grind and what you had to do to get there. And it's not always easy to get there, obviously. So what would you say are some of the keys that helped you or maybe, you know, could help others potentially follow in your footsteps when it comes to winning at all those levels? Um, first, I have to say having faith and believing in your dreams. Um, second, I like to say, don't cut corners. Take care of your body and, you know, do the small things when nobody is looking. Um, don't just think that, especially now with technology, don't think that you can see something on the internet and you can just go and do it and it's gonna work for you. Um, put, put that work in and build that foundation. That's the most important thing. Um, I think I built naturally and i can't i can't sit up here and lie to y'all and say that that was my focus that was my mindset when i was young it was natural back then you know we was outside we was playing so my foundation was built naturally as far as my body getting strong i never put bad things in my body never smoke never drink so that that wasn't something that you know i had to battle um as a youth and also as i got older so I have to say them things, take care of your body, build a great foundation um, and, and and believe. Now, in, n nowadays in sports, especially youth sports, you're seeing a lot of kids being able to play year round and whatever it is because of the facilities, the technology, whatever else. Um, and and th there are positives and negatives to that in a lot of people's opinions because of focusing on one thing. Out of curiosity, did you play any other sports? And if so, did you feel like those sports would help make you a better football player? Yes, excuse me. Um, my favorite sport is basketball. You know, I could have, you know, um, if I would have put the work in and, and everything, I guess I could have probably went to a small school and played basketball also. Um, I ran, I did track, did high jump, tried to do the 400, 4x4 four four, um, relay. Um, I played basketball, um, baseball for a minute. I played tennis. Um, so, yes, I would have to say basketball, if nothing else, definitely helped. Even when I got old and I broke my hip my first year in the league, that off season, when it came to me coming back to the NFL in the off season, from that point on, all I did was, oh, yeah, and I boxed also growing up. Only thing I did was box and play basketball, and it helped me as far as my agility, being agile and everything else and got my muscles and bones back strong. So I have to say it definitely helped me out. And I know track definitely builds your speed and te teach you the proper way to run. So I have to say yes. You know, w when it comes to your success at the NFL level, obviously, you know, you, you, you found a way to sustain yourself for a long time in the league, which, as you know, a lot of people, you know, it, it's extremely difficult in any professional sport, let alone the NFL because of all the injury risk and everything. When you think about, do you feel like you had a different appreciation for winning Super Bowl 46 because of the loss in Carolina? Oh, or, yeah. You know, and, and if so, like, what about that moment helped build you up to that moment in 2012? Well, well I can, I can, it, it's, that's a great question. Um, I definitely appreciate it a lot more. I was a lot more mature. Um, when I went to the Super Bowl the first time, I was young, you know, counting that I missed a whole year from my hip injury my first year. So I went to the Super Bowl within my my fourth year, but my third year on the football field. So, and we was playing in the busy city as far as Houston. Um, so I was involved in all the events, all the events that was paying me to come out to, signing and the, the little freedom that we did have. I was in the streets, you know, trying to enjoy every moment. The second go around, I knew that that burnt me out and I I was able to capture the moment versus being involved in the moment. Um, I was able to just slow everything down and say, okay, do you have to appreciate this, but at the same time, stay focused. So that's what made it even special. And winning the Super Bowl in New York is on a whole nother level. It's nothing like it, you know. I, I have to say the other city, L.A. might try and compete, but, you know, just going through them big old buildings in New York and then going across the bridge and getting the same treatment in Jersey is on a whole nother level. And, and to kind of keep rolling with that, 
Uh, obviously, there's got to be plenty of moments during that Super Bowl that stick out more, you know, to you from over the years. Is there anything specific off the top of your head, one specific memory that you're always going to remember, you know, when it comes to just the game or anything leading up to it? Hmm, man, I got so many great memories. I, I you know, I we had such a great relationship in that secondary you know, the Ross, the Webster, and Kenny Phillips, and the Prince, and my my brother, and all, you know, we, we built the great brotherhood. So I would have to say just going through the moments and them guys looking, especially, I remember Andrea coming to me one time and telling me, like, dear, if I don't, you know, if nothing else, I want to win the Super Bowl for you. I have to say that's what stands out, knowing how hard some of my brothers um, wanted to win the Super Bowl and, uh, you know, one of them that I have a lot of respect for looking me in my eyes and making that statement. So I have to say that stands out more than anything. Dion, I got a, a quick guess, question about that that, yeah. that last play of the Super Bowl. Uh, Dan, I'll let you get back to it in a second. That last play, when you guys were all going up for the Hail Mary block, right, I don't know if you've gone and watched it back and watched the highlights back, but all the commentators and, and Rich Eisen, when they're calling the highlights, they're all saying, oh, if Rob Gronkowski had a healthy ankle, maybe he gets that ball. From your point of view, was Gronk even close to that ball? Because watching it back, it didn't look like he had a chance of catching it. No. No, he had some. First of all, you had so many guys jumping that didn't supposed to be jumping on the defense, for one. But if you if, if how that play was designed, um, how we practice it with Kenny and myself jumping, you know, coming out of college, even up to that point, I'm falling back and jumping and I was hiding grump and I'm falling back jumping. But, um, you know, Kenny Phillip was over everybody. Kenny jumped everybody and he actually hit the ball with, with myself and I had grump arms. So it was, he didn't have a chance. Yeah, I didn't. Chance. I didn't think so. You just gotta let all the all the national sports guys are, of course, hyping up Gronk because he's having that great year uh, back in 2011, and he's coming off that ankle. They were just looking for something to talk about, I'm trying to discredit the Giants yet again. But uh, yeah. I just had to ask that. Yeah, no, Dan, trust you, me, you I I, I agree. You know, it's something similar to that actually. If you had to explain to people what it is like playing against Tom Brady, how would you explain it? Oh, you know, you know, Tom is, Tom is that dude. Um, I have a lot of respect for Tom. Tom and I came out the same year. Um, we always had a great relationship. You know, I don't have, have anything negative to say about him. Facing him in the first Super Bowl just showed me how big of a leader he was. Um, him being young, coming into that game, and I saw a big offensive lineman that was a veteran mess up, and the way he jumped down his throat, I was like, whoa. You know what I mean? It's coming from a young quarterback like that. And I walked off the field looking at Tom a totally different way that made me get more focused throughout that game. Um, but um, I have a lot of respect for Tom. You know, when they ask me about quarterbacks I face, is, is he the toughest one? And I always tell them no. I think Peyton Manning is the toughest I ever faced. Um, but Tom is definitely, you know, when it, come down, when it comes to being, you know, the, the greatest from his accomplishments, I have to give it to him. Um, he don't panic. His poise is on a whole nother level. So um, I would definitely have to take my hat off to say that he's definitely one of them top threes to start for the home. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Dion, yeah, th thank you for your time, man. This, th this is great. Yeah. yeah. I was going to, I just had, yeah, I just had one more for you. Outside of the quarterback, because you, you played in a really great era of quarterbacks with Tom and Peyton, like you mentioned, Drew Brees, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, Big Ben, Phillip Rivers. The list goes on with all these legends that you played against. Outside of that, who were the toughest guys for you to play against? Receivers, tight ends, tough guys for you to guard, uh, great route runners, great hands, guys that you just maybe had a hard time with, and uh, what made them so great? Mm, that's a hard question. And when you say who was the best receiver-wise, I went against a lot of great receivers. Um, you talking about the T.O.s, the Galloways, Jerry Rice at the end of his career, um, the Steve Smiths. But I have to say the one that runs the best route that I ever faced would have to be Jimmy Smith that I played with down in Jacksonville. When it came, we, we used to call him smooth because um, – 
every route he ran, it was so smooth. You couldn't tell exactly what he was doing. Um, but I can't just give it to one. I, I have to, I'll be naming so many, you know, Reggie Wayne's, Marvin Harrison's. It was so many greats that I faced, you know, the Randy Moss. I was going to say Randy Moss in your first game, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, um, and I'm going to forget some. So I can't just give it to one receiver, but um, I faced a lot. I faced a lot, and um, I enjoyed every moment of it. I enjoyed every moment because it was very competitive. And, um, you know, if I could do it all over again, you know, I, I definitely do it a little different. I think I put a little bit more time into studying them versus studying the offense and studying the quarterback. Um, but yeah, I can't give it to just one. Yeah, no, I, I know it's a tough, it's a tough ask because again, you played in such a great era. Um, the the last one I had for you was uh, 2011. You went out on top as a Super Bowl champion. Was uh, was that something you had planned on doing going into the season, or was it like after that game? It was like, okay, I'm good. I, I I've had a great career and I can go out a champion. Um, I actually thought about it the year before. Um, I, when I first um, signed with New York in 2010, I actually told um, Kenny Phillips, he was hurt. They had just drafted him. And I told him, I said, take your time, bro, and um, get your knee together. I'm not coming to replace you. I'm coming to you know, coming to sub in until, you know, you can get healthy or whatever, but I want you to come back 100%. And um, so we finished that year and it didn't pan out because of injuries and everything else. So the next year, um, I told the guys going in, I'm retiring regardless. You know, I said, <laughs> hopefully I can retire on the Super Bowl, but, you know, I'm retiring regardless. So, yeah, it was on my mind from the jump. Well, that's great that they were able to uh, to get that last one for you. Those were all the questions I had, Dion. Dan, did you have any uh, anything else? Yes, just one last thing. Once again, thank you for your time, man. We appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. And um, if you could just tell us a little bit more about your foundation and everything you're working on back there, that would be amazing because I know there's a lot of people here who would love to know. Okay, yes. Um, it's called Grant Foundation. Um, Grant, you know, stands for Greatness Requires All Necessary Tools. And it's for the un underprivileged youth, you know, trying to give them um, the opportunities and the resources that others have to level the playing field. Um, we do a lot of scholarships throughout the year. We do toy drives. We do um, Christmas giveaway, turkey giveaway during Thanksgiving. Um, we done donated computers to schools and to kids. So it's a lot that we do. We have a mentorship program. And I also part owner of a company there in Augusta called DJ Water Ice. And so sometime, you know, the company will go to different schools and donate water ice to the schools, like academic to Catalan teams and everything. Yeah. So we do a lot of things throughout the year, not just in the Augusta or the Georgia area. We also do some things in the New York and New Jersey area also. Awesome. Yeah. Dion again. Uh, thank you so much for the time. We really do appreciate you joining us this morning. And, uh, you know, if there's anything, you know, we can help you out with, with the foundation, if there's any way uh, you want people to help out or contact you, let us know and we'll be sure to, to put the word out. And congratulations again on a well-deserved induction into the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame. Thank you. This was fun. I never did uh, a Zoom, a podcast interview yeah. before so this was fun so whenever y'all need me back on if y'all feel like y'all didn't you know ask enough questions you know just let me know and we'll figure it out absolutely yeah we just started this up so not now. too long ago and so we're just trying to uh bring on some big names like yourself and just talk a little ball have some fun with it yeah good job all right. great job thank you dion have awesome, a good one man. thank you so much thank man you. we'll talk to you soon all right y'all have a good one all right see you guys record a lot of fun there talking to uh, Dion Grant again, a Josie alum, uh, played college ball at the University of Tennessee, went on to the NFL, played 12 years in the NFL for Carolina, uh, Jacksonville, Seattle, and New York, uh, the Giants, where he won a Super Bowl in his final season. So uh, really great to hear from him. He just got inducted again into the Georgia High School Football Hall of Fame this year. That ceremony is going to be in October. Um, so coming up here in a few months, He'll be uh, inducted along with 39 other high school football legends here in the Peach State. But okay, that's going to uh, wrap things up for us for now. 
Uh, we will check back in in a little while, but if you uh, if you're gonna log off for the day, we'll see you on our midday newscast. Zana and Tim will have the latest for you over there. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in.